Hello everybody, uh, presenting a uh, robotic colostomy reversal after previous sigmoid colectomy via laparotomy. A 38 year old woman, uh, she had an emergent exploratory laparotomy sigmoid colectomy for an obstructing sigmoid tumor. She's about six months out from that and uh, presenting for colostomy reversal. Really appreciate everybody that's uh, watched the videos, and especially those that have um, you know, taken the time to critically comment. Um, I, I learn a lot from that, and trying to adjust my approach to get better with uh, with every operation. And I learn a lot from watching your guys' videos too. So thank you. So here, you know, with these cases, um, minimally invasive surgery after laparotomy, you just never know how much scar tissue you're going to get into. I spent about 45 minutes at the uh, beginning of the case just taking down adhesions um, this is just the omentum to the midline this wasn't too bad um, and then we'll get to um, she kind of had a lot of uh, small bowel adhesions uh, in her belly so I freed enough of those up I didn't go about freeing all of those up um, but enough to you know complete the operation I skipped over the vast majority of the lysis of adhesions just to try to move to the meat of the case. So right now, um, obviously this is the colostomy. I'm taking down those small bowel adhesions and mental adhesions to the colostomy. Having done you know, a handful of these cases, um, this one wasn't bad in terms of like the scar tissue. And especially what was nice about this one, as you'll see, is like the her rectal stump was um, easy to identify um, and easily mobilized. So here, um, just doing what I can to try to work laterally to again mobilize the descending colon up to the splenic flexure. And then once I get kind of to the point where I can no longer do any more mobilization because of that colostomy in my way, then I'll go about um, taking down the colostomy before performing the uh, splenic flexure mobilization. So here's where I feel like I've uh, done all the mobilization I can do up to the splenic flexure without taking down the, uh, the ostomy. So I'm going to go up to the fascia here 
and uh, just totally clear off um, the ostomy from the fascia. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear my kids in the background. So my poor placement for this case, um, it's similar to doing a left colectomy or a same way colectomy, but I stood the ports up even more straight, right? So right lower quadrant, I do have the 12 millimeter um, you know, stapler port. And then in the right periumbilical area, probably five, six centimeters uh, to the patient's right of the umbilicus is the camera port. And then I have two eighths going up from there. I do have an assistant port in the uh, kind of the right flank area there. So it was sufficient to do the operation. Um, as you see, I did have to mobilize the splenic flexure, and she had a good amount of scarring up there. I felt like my uh, most cephalad 8 millimeter port, it would have been helpful if I made that more lateral on the patient's right side, maybe coming underneath the falciform ligament instead of on the patient's left side of the falciform. But uh, live and learn. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of clear off, um, clear off the colon, taking uh, the mesentery completely until I just have colon, and this will be where you know you'll see I'll staple across the colon there, and that'll be my um, you know proximal part of my anastomosis. So this is like my favorite part of the operation here. Um, I kind of use that tip-up grasper down there to stop the anvil from falling too far into the colon. And then just at the bedside, I have my assistant use uh, a Kelly and just grasping the end of the anvil, just slide that in uh, into the colostomy. And then I make sure that it's low enough that, uh, you know, I'm not going to try to staple across the anvil. But also, obviously, it's nice that the, the robotic stapler wouldn't let me do that. Um, so I'm coming in with a blue load, and we'll just, you know, transect the colon right uh, at the level of the fascia. Now, I've done this a few times by doing the, uh, leaving the spike, you know, the, the plastic spike on the end of that anvil and attaching um, a suture to it. And then you can, a lot of times, see the suture after you do this transection and pull that spike up to the level of the uh, up to the level of staple line and then kind of buzz until you pull it through. I, I found that that is not always successful or what will happen is I don't have good enough control on uh, where that suture is going to exit the staple line after I transect it and it's been off to the side a couple of times and I just didn't like that. Um, so with this I, I, I don't use the spike anymore um, basically just drop it in make, um, make that colotomy right at the level of the staple, right in the middle um, of the descending colon there. And then I've been very easily able to just push, you know, the anvil through. All right, so I did have to use table motion in this case, which is just wonderful. Um, now that we have two XI robots, I can do that whichever room I'm in. I didn't put her in any reverse T-berg. I just basically leveled out the bed a bit, not even all the way. So now entering through the uh, gastrocolic ligament, you know, in the lesser sac, uh, for this patient, I found that this was the best way that I could mobilize the splenic flexure. She had a lot of scarring up here of like the omentum to the spleen, as you can see there on the right. And it was challenging from laterally. So decided to go from, uh, you know, supercolic medial to lateral. And it worked out well.
right, so that's most of the splenic flexure mobilization. I'll do some more kind of medialization of the colon to make sure I've got all the length that I can get, and it was uh, it was sufficient. So now you're going to get a look at uh, her rectal stump here. There was a bit of um, sigmoid colon left on this. It was so nice and mobile, so this, this made the uh, additional sigmoid resection so easy. I find you always have to take off some of the top of the rectal stump um, just because of how scarred it gets, and it's just not compliant enough to easily pass the stapler up there or even if you're doing a, a hand-sewn anastomosis. I think probably everybody takes off a little bit of additional rectal stump here. So that was nice and easy. So now I do have an assistant at the bedside, um, but she, she doesn't go from below to do the stapler or anything like that, so that's me as well. Oh, this is a little little trick here. I'm just sewing the uh, additional specimen there to the colostomy. So that when I finally cut out the colostomy at the end of the case, that'll just come with it. And here she had pretty, um, pretty nice posterior rectus sheath. So I thought it would be good to do um, the posterior closure robotically and then after removing the colostomy, um, close the anterior fascia as well. And that went pretty good. run it back a couple of throws to lock it in place and then we'll get to the anastomosis alright I'm just passing the rectal sizers up did the 25, did the 29, did the 33 I placed a 29 anvil is the size of that and so the 29 EEA stapler came up pretty easy And it just seemed to, uh, I don't know, nicely lend itself to an end-to-end -end here. So I'm just running back and forth from uh, in between the patient's legs to the robot, in between, in between the patient's legs. And so uh, I'm doing the anastomosis here. and then we'll do our leak test. I use a rigid proctoscope for this. I know many people use you know, the flexible scope, which I think would probably be nice, but as long as you know, I take the time to straighten out the rectum, I, I can get that rigid proctoscope up to and above the level of the anastomosis. The test looks good, so that's essentially the end of the case. Um, we will just, you know, undock the robot, cut out the colostomy, close the anterior fascia, and, and that was it. Uh, she did very well, very little pain, and it's so nice to be able to do this uh, minimally invasive after laparotomy. Thank you for watching.